Room Sense IQ have a lot of similarities with Akara FP2. It lacks zone support and it is not that pretty looking, but it have more embedded sensors and respectively provides more options for automations. Another similarity is that both devices are currently unavailable. I'm not quite sure why is that for the Akara FP2, but for the Room Sense IQ the reason is simple. The device is not publicly released yet. The release date is just around the corner and if you want to be informed, you must sign up for the updates from the official roomsenselabs.com website. And you will not miss the big launch day only special deal. But is this device worth it? I will say that the pre-sale Roomsense IQ unit that I got have some bad packaging. Actually, it had no package at all and its case feels like it's printed on a very cheap, not leveled 3D printer by a kid in 4th grade who just gets started with the 3D printing. It is far from the sleek Akara FP2 design for example, but I hope it will be also far from it in terms of the price. Anyways, I ignore the case in hope that the diamond is just not polished yet and I duck into what's inside. And here the things look promising. This room sense IQ device is like a wet dream of the smart home enthusiast as it contains four different sensors into one. These sensors are MM wave radar coming from the well-known LD2410 module, also Murata PIR sensor that can be used to filter out non-human activities and reduce false alarms. Next is temperature and humidity provided by SHT30 sensor and attention here, they have isolated the temperature sensor to mitigate any interference and finally a light sensor. RoomSense IQ is powered by an ESP32 S3 MCU with built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. And the device also includes an USB-C port for power and serial communications. The best part is that it all works with Home Assistant, so you can do endless useful home automations just by having this one device. Having said that, I decided to do an initial testing. I just powered the device using the included USB-C cable and I opened my Home Assistant integrations page in hope the device will be auto discovered. And just like that, I had Room Sense IQ working with every sensor represented as a separate Home Assistant entity and with values that are updating life. No, 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 this is too much even for a wet dream. Actually, not everything was working right away. So I had two choices in front of me. First, to try the ready-to-use pre-flushed Raspberry Pi 4 image that they send me, which have Home Assistant pre-installed and everything pre-configured for the RoomSense IQ. Or second, to manually add everything to my Home Assistant environment. I decided to use the latter and here I am, still trying to figure it out. Kidding, of course, if you have some basic Home Assistant experience, the installation is not difficult at all. RoomSense IQ communicate with Home Assistant over MQTT protocol, so you need to have MQTT broker installed. The easiest way is to use Mosquito Broker add-on that is available as one-click install in the Home Assistant add-on store. A quick side note here, if you don't have add-on store on your Home Assistant at all, then please register for my upcoming Home Assistant webinar and you'll figure it out. On top, it is free. So, after I have the MQTT broker up and running, I have to power the RoomSense IQ and to join to the Wi-Fi network that the device creates automatically. The Wi-Fi network name is RoomSense IQ and the password is password. After that, I open the following IP address in my browser so I can configure the device. Inside the provided web interface, I had to do only two things, to enter my home Wi-Fi credentials and my MQTT broker credentials. Once the device is connected to both my home wireless network and my MQTT broker, I can go to Home Assistant integration section and this time I can see that I have 50 different entities. I can check them all and they are now really updating life. I can add them to my Home Assistant dashboard and I can start making home automations based on the changes in the occupancy, temperature, humidity and light density in the room where Room Sense IQ is located. Along with the sensors, 
there are some controls represented as sliders in Home Assistant that helps you fine-tune your device. And if all of this is looking kind of boring or too crowded for you, you can try the open source project in GitHub created specially for this. It is a Home Assistant dashboard that have all you need in a more ordered way. To get that, you need to execute eight steps well described in the GitHub repo. From terminal add-on to execute these commands, then to add this YAML code in configuration.yaml file, to enable advanced mode and to add these resources and to restart your Home Assistant. Afterwards, the RoomSense IQ Home Assistant dashboard will be visible and ready to be used. Overall, despite the bad packaging and the low quality case of the RoomSense IQ, I actually enjoyed the device and I think it have a potential. In my humble opinion, the success or failure of this product entirely depends on the initial sale price that its creators will put. If the price is right, it will fly. Otherwise, it will sink and the people will prefer a Kara FP2 or some other DIY alternatives. Honestly, I don't know the RoomSense IQ price yet and I guess we all have to subscribe for their list so we can be among the first that will know it. Until then, download my Smart Home Glossary for free from my website and tell me what do you think about RoomSense IQ. Will you get it or will you skip it? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. I'm Kiryu and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.